Welcome to episode 14 of the Luxury Travel Marketer podcast. My name is David, I'm your podcast host, and I welcome you to a new episode for our luxury marketing insights for the travel industry. Today's episode is going to be on attribution modeling. But before we get into like talking about it, please make sure to go to jadewolfmarketing.com slash newsletter and subscribe to our newsletter. We have awesome industry articles, digital marketing, know-how guides, um, book recommendations, software recommendations, you name it. You can also follow us on social media. We're very active on LinkedIn. Uh, you can join our LinkedIn group. Uh, it's a perfect opportunity to network with other luxury travel marketing professionals. If you're a company who is currently struggling a little bit with your digital marketing in terms of generating high net worth leads or direct bookings for your company, go to jadewolfmarketing.com slash discovery and book a paid discovery with us. We can start off a dialogue and help you get to where you want to be in terms of revenue, sales and profits. Now let's talk about attribution modeling. Well, first of all, we have to define the term attribution modeling for the people out there, for the marketers who might be coming more from the analog world or other professionals who might not be that familiar with marketing in general. So attribution modeling is a term from uh, direct marketing, from digital marketing especially, where it's all about you know creating a model so you can figure out or attribute where your revenue streams, where your conversions and your sales are coming from, right? And how you know they come to be and what kind of like metrics and mathematical uh, statistics you know influence uh, those kind of like numbers so you have to look at attribution model always modeling always in the context of funnels because they're a closely related concept right so I don't need to go into what funnels are because that's what Jade Wolf marketing is all about that's what we do we build luxury marketing funnels online uh, so if you want to know more about that, go to episode 7 and start listening from that episode onwards. Uh, we have a bunch of episodes just covering every aspect of a funnel and, you know, what it's all about. Now, in the context of funnels, um, if you have built a successful funnel, meaning you have figured out the media part, where how where your traffic is going to come from, uh, how you're going to acquire it, and then your content part or your middle part where you like, okay, where do gonna people land? what I'm going to show to them when they come to my website and then like the follow up closing part where how I'm going to like nurture the relationship with them, how I'm going to like, you know, start a conversation and how can I make it easy for them to do business with me. Once you have those uh, components in place and they're like mapped out and set up and designed, now you need to start thinking about, okay, how I'm going to measure this. Attribution modeling is all about measuring. It's about analytics. It's about data. It's about math. Not many people like this, I know, but it's really important. And this is pretty much what differentiates direct marketing uh, online from just traditional brand marketing or luxury brand marketing, where you're just creating visual stunning things or great events. And, you know, just you just plaster them all over like relevant places and you just hope people are going to recognize and associate them with your brand. Those are beautiful. Those are wonderful. Every big luxury brand should do those in travel as well. But a certain percentage of your budget should go also to, you know, a direct marketing funnel, the type that we build at Jade Wolf, because that's where you can have predictable revenue, predictable growth, and you can have just data and learn about, you know, how people interact with your company online and in a sales context. So that being said, you know, what are some important funnel metrics to track, right? How do people go from A to Z for the beginning, middle and end part of your funnel? Well, there is a bunch of that are pretty common in digital marketing, which I guess lots of you people have heard before in different contexts, maybe when people were talking about mainstream media like Google or Facebook. Uh, let's talk about, um, you know, CPC, cost per click, which is a good one to start with, right? What do you pay for the click? CPM, cost per mile. If you're uh, going for bulk and you quantity and you want just a lot of impressions, a lot of people seeing your ads, what are you paying per thousand impressions? That's your CPM. Uh, then, you know, going onwards, what's your cost per lead? You know, if somebody fills out a form, requests a call, requests a consultation, um, you know, reserves a, a room or whatever, uh, but hasn't paid yet, what does that cost you? What does it cost per lead? Then going onwards, you know, what is your CPA, your cost per acquisition from the moment, you know, show somebody something online to the moment you actually do business and there's a financial transfer, what's the whole cost of that process? per user per sale that you acquire what's your customer lifetime value 
right? How much business do you expect to do with each customer? Uh, in luxury, this can be a lot of money. So people shouldn't like, uh, you know, neglect this kind of metric when they're calculating their costs and, you know, results of their funnel. Um, what is, you know, the percentual chance of, you know, recurring business? Um, there's not really a metric acronym for that, but I like to, you know, like to talk with people to m set like, okay, if my average cost of lifetime value is going to be 1 million for each new, I don't know, private jet charter customer I acquire, what is the percentual chance per customer that, you know, they will actually, you know, um, max out that lifetime value, right? How many of my of 100 customers are going to turn into a 1 million per year customer, right? So should you should be aware of those odds a little bit and try to like get a grip, grab on that. Um, then you can continue to, you know, like just general marketing overall of your marketing expenditure, kind of like return on investment is a common one that's been thrown around all the time. It's a little bit of a buzzword in all kinds of B2B business contexts, but it means essentially, you know, once you have, um, all your money that you spend in your marketing and your sales and everything, what's your return on it, right? How much revenue do you generate? Um, what's then you can obviously make sure that you know your profit margins um, and things like that. Then there's also a number it's return on advertising spent, ROAS, uh, which is a good number to calculate in media buying, like, you know, how much return do you need to get on every dollar you spend on advertising to make sure that you're not losing money on the sale, right? This is another thing you could calculate. So once you have those metrics mapped out, you will pretty much have mapped out, I guess, like the majority of your funnel. And then you can start looking into, okay, how am I going to track those things, right? Some of the top of the funnel kind of metrics are usually tracked by whoever provides the media outlet. You know, for example, if you would buy mainstream media, which again, I wouldn't recommend. I would recommend niche media and, you know, other sources for, for affluent traffic. But if you would go with Google, Facebook, they would have dashboards where, you know, they tell you exactly what the cost per click will be because it's an auction. It's very easy, like to, to calculate and show those costs will go up and down, but they will always tell you, you know, what your cost per conversion, what your cost per lead is and all that stuff. If you set it up correctly. Um, but you know, even if you buy niche media, people will tell you what the CPC, what the cost per M CPM is, you know, like what the CTR was, the click through rate, right? How much click through rate is a, is a is a tricky one because it's often you know like used as a vanity metric like followers on social media for example it or subscribers in your list or like data in your crm it doesn't necessarily mean anything right because lots of people might click on your ad because you've shown it you show showing a great fantastic luxury ad in a completely irrelevant context and lots of dreamers and dabblers are clicking on it because they dream about booking a suite with the Hyatt or something like that once in their lifetime but maybe they are you know like workers at a fast food restaurant and they really have to will save up for that quite some time or move up in their career before they can afford it so you need context is really really important when you're thinking looking at CTR and you know things like followers amount of subscribers are those relevant people are you showing it to the relevant sources then you know uh, you go into link tracking obviously which can help a lot with differentiating where your traffic sources come from it's really important to be aware in your uh, attribution modeling in your analytics dashboard where different where the difference is between organic traffic and paid traffic right that's the first distinction you need to make what are your organic traffic channels common organic traffic channels would be your organic social media your existing audience that you post towards or what the what little bit of organic reach the algorithms give you these days it would be something like seo right your search engine optimization it would be something like referral traffic from uh, sites where you have links or you know previous PR measures that you did or things like that. Then the direct traffic, then, you know, you can split that again into like different types of organic traffic on a more technical side, but let's not go into that. Then the paid traffic, obviously, that's what it's really important for us because we're building funnels here. We're running direct marketing. We're running growth marketing. We want predictability and, you know, forecasting. So you start looking at things like, um, you know, is it mainstream media? Is it Google? Is it Facebook? Is it Instagram? Most likely not. Is it LinkedIn? Maybe a little bit for private jet charters. Um, then, you know, from the niche media, how do you track those, right? Because on your analytics dashboard, they might just show up as like some referral traffic. So that's where link tracking really comes into place. There's something called UTM parameters. 
um, which are pretty much just you know additional attributes you can attach to the URL that you give the advertiser or the media platform that you're buying uh, advertising from and they will when the traffic comes back to your analytics dashboard to your website will tell the analytics dashboard oh this click came actually from Rob Report or this click came from How to Spend It or this click came from Spears Magazine or this click came from um, I don't know GQ or whatever it might be um, so the dashboard in that moment can interpret that and show you exactly how much traffic your campaign your display advertisement your email uh, link that you dropped into uh, an email insertion or a, a dedicated email drop that you bought from a mailing list with affluent people uh, it will tell you exactly how much that traffic was and you know and how it and then you can keep tracking it for your dashboard how that traffic behaved on your site and you can associate it um, additional tools you can use you know to uh, do that you know uh, even beyond just regular UTM parameters uh, and just maybe also do it with organic uh, traffic meaning if, so if you already have a huge social media following or a mailing list is uh, you know um, link tracking tools like bitly or Owly, um, which you know just wrap the link to make it shorter to make it a little bit more neat and those will then also help your dashboard you know figure out where the traffic is from so you'll be able to tell if you have a hundred thousand followers like which post with a bitly link generated the most business for you which can be very useful because if you're doing a distribution model you really should look at organic and paid measures to be able to tell you know things apart and how effective everything is then you let's, once you have link tracking and your traffic source is a little bit in place for the attribution model you look at the analytics dashboards right the two most commonly used analytics dashboards in the west i'm not talking china different story um, are google analytics and uh, omniture from adobe right omniture being a paid solution google analytics being free uh, both you know companies offer training offer you know lots of documentation there's a lot of things we can do with those dashboards which i might go into like in a future episode but this is not a data analyst podcast this is a marketing podcast so what is essential for you to know is that the dashboards are going to be an important part of your attribution modeling because that's where you're going to see your link tracking your traffic sources and what the behavior on your website is to a certain degree right so other data sources you can incorporate into your attribution model are obviously your email analytics. If you're using an ESP like MailChimp, Aweber, Constant Contact, whatever it might be, um, those uh, companies, those dashboards will provide you with some analytics like opens, clicks in your email, you know, and uh, bounce rate, all those things, subscribers, unsubscribers. And then you can, you know, track that with your web analytics dashboard and see how much revenue generated. Your CRM analytics, you know, like how many people click on the links uh, in emails that your sales team send out, you know, once, you know, they uh, do some inbound sales and for, for incoming leads, how well is that received? You know, uh, what, how much uh, data is generated for the CRM from your inbound on content campaigns, um, you know, or from other measures that you're doing. Then another thing you can do with uh, web analytics dashboards, or you can use a separate tool for it, that is a little bit more specialized is funnel visualization meaning uh, in Google it would be called uh, it can be called uh, like a behavior flow there's a custom funnel that you can set up with certain data points it's a little bit more technical you might need to help of a developer to doing that but essentially it will be able like once you have your funnel in theory on paper like I talked about the top the middle the end and you know where all the sources traffic sources are coming from uh, then you can start kind of like reflecting that in a dashboard. So you're literally looking at a funnel with numbers, live numbers that change. And, you know, you can make some forecasting, you can make some calculations. It's really useful to have funnel visualization in place. If you're doing this style of marketing that we do at Jade, well, we always use funnel visualizations for a client project. So if you want to like flash, so now we already have a bunch of data, right? Uh, we might even incorporate something like a Hootsuite dashboard, like a social media planning tool, like social media analytics via APIs, you know, so we see can also like see how our social media is affecting our funnel and our, our business, our bottom line. Uh, we can pull that data as well. So we have web analytics data, we have link and traffic data, we have uh, social media data, we have email data, we have CRM data, and we're visualizing everything in a funnel and maybe like, you know, 
tracking things in our analytics dashboards. Then if you want to flesh out each individual customer, because maybe you're running a business where you know every visitor can be very valuable because you're buying very expensive media, for example, like Rob Report Online or whatever, every quarter you're buying for 10K advertising there. And you really want to know what kind of people come from those traffic sources and what people might be coming over and over again to your website. So you can see like who, which, you know, lead nurturing effort is actually uh, fruitful and what is resulting in like, you know, things that you can potentially leverage, right? And with a sales outreach campaign. Um, so that for that, a tool like Vupra is very good, which, you know, just collects data about recurring visitors to your website. So you can create profiles, you know, somebody always comes to your site, um, and visits certain things. Then eventually the tool will collect data and you will see a more clearer picture of who that person is, not like seeing what the actual name is or like the address or something like that of the person or the social security number, nothing like that. But you know, it will just show you like more behavioral data and, it will just make it easier, you know, to see like what kind of people come back over and over and how are they interacting with your website and your content. Then, um, you know, there's tools you might think, okay, and now I know what the people are like, but how in, in analytics, I can only see which sites they visit, how much, how quickly they bounce away, you know, like if, if they buy or not, but I want to see actually how, what they do, you know, for that there's tools as well, right? There's different ones, but one that is, I really like for screen recordings is uh, Lucky Orange. It's a very cost-effective tool. It's very powerful. Um, we had it in a newsletter as a recommendation, I think, already because it's uh, it's very nice. And what it does is pretty much it does recordings of you know people browsing your site, uh, clicking things, you know, like looking at things, how long they look at things, and you can make a lot of like really good get a lot of good insights about your conversion rate optimization. Uh, on your content marketing, on your website in general. Obviously, it will not show you somebody typing in the, the credit card data. So once it goes into a booking uh, kind of like form or payment gate, it doesn't work anymore. Uh, but it's really kind of like a great tool, you know, to just analyze the website surfing behavior and see it live unfold in front of you. And you can make some changes right there. You see people are clicking on, on icons that are not linked to anything or you know, people are not finding the parts, the CTAs on your website that you would like them to find, then you can make the necessary changes with that really easily and really fast. So, okay, then we have uh, a way to, you know, record visitor behavior to flesh out our, our visitor profiles. We're visualizing the funnel. We're pulling all kinds of data sources. So attribution, we have like uh, KPIs that we are marketing, KPIs that we are tracking in all fraud or advertising. So we have a really good attribution model right there already, right? So we have a lot of data, we have a lot of like intelligent uh, sources we can base decisions on that are not based on like just instinct and feeling and uh, some old school approach that has nothing to do with science and reality, but we can, you know, be, be very modern and scientific about it. And the next thing is obviously, you know, unifying that and associating certain costs to metrics. Like, you know, like if you uh, think about it, we still, just seeing, you know, what everything costs, but not necessarily what we spend on it in this moment, right? We're seeing what the CPC is, but maybe, you know, the other number which we overall spent on that traffic channel is somewhere else in an invoice or whatever, you know, there might be taxes associated with it or some labor costs. Maybe we used an agency like Jade Wolf who built our funnel and is, you know, like uh, having some management fees. Um, then we want to see that obviously as well, right? In the in the in the uh, in some kind of like overview. For that, there are data dashboards, right? Which are really good to pulling all that data together and giving you a unified view uh, that is custom to you, which shows you your costs, your expenditures, you know, different line items, and it directly associates it with pie graphs and you know different statistics and a funnel visualizations for your whole marketing. And tools you can use for that are grow.com, Tableau. There are other important players. I don't have any particular preference. I don't want to like push any companies on this podcast particularly because I don't have any affiliation with them. This is just tools that I know that I used in the past and that we sometimes would use. Um, there's probably like also more cost-effective tools. It depends on your taste and what your budget is like. But using a data dashboard at some point, if you let's say spending more than... 50,000 or $100,000 uh, a quarter on your marketing, getting those kind of dashboards in order is, I think, a must. 
and having attribution modeling on a sets beyond like just a simple Excel sheet uh, is also like a must, right? So it, you should devote time to it. And we would definitely do it for clients that spent a lot of media money with us. And, you know, uh, a lot of like really established media agencies are kind of shady in that aspect when it comes to attribution modeling and reporting because they will use things, you know, where they like kind of like, oh, we have a deal with that media company and we're getting a kickback. So we're going to change the numbers around a little bit. So for the client, it looks like it was a little bit less expensive, but actually like it costs them more in the long run and all kinds of things. With Jade Wolf, we don't want to do none of that. We don't have anything to do with that. We believe in radical transparency with our clients. That's why we always suggest, you know, we want to build dashboards for you where you can see all the costs. We want to have everything transparent, every single invoice. You can ask us everything, what every each line item, uh, each dollar was for that you spend with us. So you can rest comfortably and know what your money is actually doing in terms of your marketing. And we know that there's a lot of like uh, additional explanation is necessary for that. But for clients who really want that, you know, who are maybe a little bit distrustworthy of marketing of general or marketers because they've been burned in the past, we're happy to provide that. So, yeah, so pretty much um, that's it on attribution model. Just to sum it up again, you have link tracking for your traffic sources. You have a web analytics dashboard. You have different data sources like email, social, CRM. Um, then obviously, you know, you looking at KPIs, you tracking them, do you visualizing the funnel, you associating costs with it, you pulling all that together into like a data dashboard that gives you a controllable, customizable view. And then you have a not only a working funnel, but you have a wonderful, powerful opportunity to track, you know, where you're losing money, where you can optimize and where you can scale, right? That's where we all want to go. We want to go to something that is like predictable, that is scalable, and that will deliver like good results, good a good amount of revenue for a company in the long run. Okay, that's it for this week's episode. Um, again, if you're interested in like getting some of this attribution modeling going on for your company and setting it up, you can work with us. You don't need to necessarily just buy a whole funnel from us. We can just help you like get a clear picture on your uh current funnels if you have any at all so go to jadewolfmarketing.com slash discovery and book a paid discovery with us uh, we are worth every cent of those five to five hundred dollars and if you end up becoming our client um, you know we refund the fee to you back to you with our first invoice so you don't actually pay for it at all so um, yeah next episode we're gonna start a new kind of like multi-series uh, on common issues in different luxury travel verticals. Jade Wolf Marketing serves private aviation, yachting, luxury travel agents and agencies and hospitality businesses, meaning hotels, resorts, boutique hotels, villa rental companies, etc. right? So we want to talk a little bit about each of those verticals and what are some common issues that our market research has uncovered and that we come face over and over again when talking with sales and marketing managers and how our style of marketing or digital marketing in general could address those issues, right? And it's going to be, I think, very useful for a certain percentage of our, of our listeners who want something, you know, that speaks directly to their pain points. So stay tuned uh, for next week's episode and make sure to subscribe to us, like also on like if it's Apple or Google, Stitcher, wherever you're listening to us. Thank you so much. Uh, this is David signing out. Uh, talk to you soon.